Welcome to the Nifty Nuggets Weekly News and Reviews Podcast Show. In this week's episode, we will be talking about JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon is predicting an economic hurricane, while the whales such as Anderson Horowitz raised 4.5 billion crypto fund. China is airdropping digital one, while goblins are attacking the NFT space. But before we jump into the fryer, make sure you smash that like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification. Be sure to leave the password, which will be revealed during the show, for your chance to win an invite into the Nifty Nuggets server. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And make sure you leave that five-star review. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Nuggets Nifty. Now, let's get on to the show. Nuggets Nifty. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. My name is Chani, and I will be the host of the show today. While the crypto and NFT space are pretty much down this week, well, it's not looking good, right? But I made sure I have brought you all the juicy, good, warm news to your table. And if you're still feeling down after hearing all this awesome news, please come to the Nifty Nuggets server and we will give you a well, warm welcome and just make sure you have brought the sauce on the table. So coming into the news of the day. Let's have a look at the coin gecko first to have a look of the whole market. Well, the crypto market is down a lot this week. So the market cap, we're doing 1.27 trillions. Imagining, you know, quite a few weeks ago, we were doing about 2 trillions. That, then we're just shouting, oh my God, the bull market is coming back. But uh, the reality is, you know, we, we, we went down and went down. So the Bitcoin is around 30 thousand dollars range whereas the dominance is at 44.3 percent that means nearly half of the money that is in the crypto market are in bitcoin which means investors like me are getting worried about their altcoins or whether or not their altcoin season is going to come today or this year so Instead of investing into these moonshots, they are putting their money into the safer bet, which is the Bitcoin. Ethereum price has, you know, come down to the below 2,000 point for quite a while now. Ethereum price at a recording is $1,771. The last seven days, it's a little bit up. Actually, it's 2.5 up, but overall, it's still not looking good. Everything is down except Cardano is up 23.6%. Uh, you know, me and crypto viewers used to joke around, you know, if you see a big rise in the Cardano, you can, uh, you, you're, make sure, you're making sure that you are seeing a bull market. Well, uh, jokes on us, we're seeing the Cardano rise, but uh, we're not seeing any of the bull market sign. Let's have a look at the uh, crypto fear and greed index. Well, that you can guess that we must be in the extreme fear without looking at any chart, just because investors are being so scared what's, what's going to happen with their money, what's going to happen to their uh, hard-earned life-saving money. So even though this is not a financial advice show, this is for your entertainment purposes only, but just make sure what you are, whatever you are investing in the crypto space, just because it is such a volatile and risky place to um, play some bets or invest, make sure that you only invest in the money that you can afford to lose. That is the number one rule and the most basic rule. Coming, at, have a look at the OpenSea trading volume for the last seven days. It's completely dead. I believe this is this this is the lowest I have seen for quite a while. I'll say four, actually, I'll say eight, nine months that I haven't seen 26 million of the day trading volume, which is super low, right? Because if you imagine a couple of uh, weeks ago, we had the, uh, the, the A plant, the other deed, and at that point, we were having $476 million of the trading volume on that day, whereas we uh, just had a $26 million trading volume. So quite a big difference. So that, that being said, the goblin, a word goblin, is going 
hit right now. Right, the first one is uh, come into the OpenSea place and open up the status. The hottest of the last 24 hours, of course, is going to be the Goblin Town WTF. Look, I am not swearing. This is literally their name, Goblin Town WTF. And uh, the price, this is a free mint, right? This is a 10K collection, but it's free mint. And the price was have been hanging around, uh, you know, 0.001 ETH for quite a while. But then all of a sudden, everyone is buying them. And for the the week's highest, I believe the floor price went to 9 to 10 ETH each. So there's jokes around that, like, um, if you want to get rich, buy one of these things and, you know, uh, later on, you can be having 10 ETH for each goblin you own, right? And that being the um, that being the catalyst, we have seen a lot of more goblins, goblin girlfriends, goblin peas, goblin poop, whatever contains goblin or whatever is connected to the goblin is on the rise these days. Um, so this one we have ranked number 23 on the OpenSea ranking. Goblin Girls, I believe yesterday was around 0.5 ETH, but today we're only seeing 0.09 ETH. So the reason behind it, I mean, well, there's no reason, right? There's a lot of things that just have no reasons. But the the way I look at it is because I look at the charts first to see what is the trading volume. And I can see there's no change in the trading volume for the last few days. So that means we're still in the in a bear market and whatever is happening within this NFT space is recycling money. That means people are from other, uh, other projects are coming into this project. So it's extremely risky and extremely volatile. So I personally would not, would never participate in one of these um, displays unless it is, you know, within my risk tolerance range, which is, you know, at this point is 0.001 ETH. And then within that range, I can play it. But other than that, I wouldn't do it. And also there's nothing I want to make sure that uh, a lot of the, these things are free mint. So when it comes to free mint, do not use your main wallet to do any free mints because a lot of free mints um, are, if not most of the free mints, are scams. So what's happening is if you click on one of those mints, you thought you were minting a free Goblin NFT which goes to 100x or you know 10,000x for the next few days, you might be signing a scam uh, you, you might be signing a scam message, which means you're giving the you know the smart contract allow the smart contract to drain your entire wallet. That includes your ETH, your um, other tokens, Shiba Inus, Dogecoins, whatever, and your NFTs as well. So just be extra careful about those uh, participating in the free means. And I personally just wouldn't be playing this uh, DJ game at all. There's another thing I would like to point out is that even though we have no money pouring into the market, having a look at the SP500 for the last few days, there's actually a big tick. And we've been talking about SP500 and Bitcoin, how correlated they are. But seeing these last seven days, a big rise, I'll say uh, that's about 7 to 8% coming from the 3800 to 4100 at the moment for the SP500. That's about 8% or 7% rise. But do we see anything similar on Bitcoin chart? Sadly not. So we didn't see any rise of the, this week. Actually, uh, the, the beginning of the week, the, uh, the price of the Bitcoin was 29,000. And right now we are around 29,000 again. So not much happening right now. Uh, I don't know what's happening. Maybe we're decoupling, but uh, when we say the crypto and the, the traditional market or decoupling, we mean that you know Bitcoin could rise despite the SP500 is um, coming down or not. But right now, the ugly truth is even though when the SP, uh, SP500 is rising, we're still seeing Bitcoin going down. But that being said, uh, Jamie Dimon which is the CEO of the JP Morgan Chase, is predicting an economic hurricane. So what he said was, right now it's kind of sunny, things are doing fine, everyone thinks the Fed can handle this. That hurricane 
It's right out there down the road coming our way. Because of the war in Ukraine, raise, rising inflation pressure and interest rates hikes from the Federal Reserve, we are going to see a big, big storm. Well, as we have said uh, about two weeks ago, I have shared the, uh, the screens, the ch charts, everything. I would not be, uh, personally, I would not be surprised to see a big hurricane. But that is a good message, fellas, because whenever you see a economic crash, that probably will be the best opportunity to step into the market rather than sell at the bottom. I mean, this goes uh, against the human um, reactions, human emotions, right? When you see things are going up, you want to hold up, right? You want to hold on your dear life. Whereas if you see a big trend going down, you want to sell and get out of here because the pressure is just too big. Um, so let's have a look at what are the whales are doing in the space. Andreessen Horowitz raised $4.5 billion of the crypto fund to take the advantage of bargainings in the down market. Look, this is how the smart money or the smart investors are, are looking at this one. So when it was hot, was a super heat, the crypto market was going to the moon, the smart money would probably just start to make take profit. Do not think about buying at the absolute bottom and selling at the absolute top because that is not going to happen. Not uh, in my personal experience. Just try to dollar cost averaging in and out when you can take the profit. So about this news, it says, this is a Silicon Valley firm that announced a new $4.5 billion fund for backing crypto and blockchain companies on Wednesday. So here's a hint. If you don't know who Anderson Horowitz is, he, is, he was a seed investor in the BRBN, the company that later provide, uh, pivoted to become a photo sharing platform, which is called Instagram. Everybody knows about Instagram, right? But it passed on the chance to invest in Instagram itself. So it uh, was a big miss of him, but still, they are controlling a lot of money. The partner Ariana Simpson and Chris Dixon liken the long-term opportunity in crypto is the next major computing cycle after the PCs in the 1980s and the internet in the 1990s and the mobile computing in the early 2000s. Well, a lot of people are fleeing away from the market. Bear markets are often when the best opportunities come about. This is what uh, Simon says, uh, Simpson said, not Simon said. Um, so this is a very positive news for us because the whales, the smart money, they are accumulating money to be ready to jump back in when the market looks a little better or just you can start dollar cost averaging in right now, right? I'm not saying like you should buy today, right now. I'm just saying buy a little bit, buy a little bit. Therefore, you can spread out risk and if the train takes off, you know, you're still on the train. But there's another thing that I want to point out um, that I just don't know, $4.5 billion, that's a lot of money, right? How is he going to spend all this money? Which is a big, big question mark for me because they are seed round investors, these people. And there's a rule that the maximum of a seed round invest is about a quarter million. So if you do the math, a quarter million to $4.5 billion, that means, you know, how many companies is, is he going to invest in? A thousand companies? Um, so, oh, actually a hundred companies, 400 companies? I, I don't know. Uh, but he probably are going to buy all those um, seed investors, seed investments, unless he's going to buy a lot of crypto, just like me and you. Here comes another news. China plans to airdrop Digital One to boost its pandemic hit economy. In a lot of the news, it says they are airdropping $30 million. Well, that is not the truth because they are airdropping $30 million, uh, $30 million digital Chinese yuan, which is ECMY. So that converts to American dollars, which will be $4.5 million of the US dollars. A lot of people think, wow, that's a lot, that's a lot. 
But if you think about the uh, population of Shenzhen, which is the city that's going to have the airdrop, uh, they have about 30 million people. So that's not a lot of money. And I, I had a look, uh, I had to dig into this news and uh, just because, you know, I can read Chinese. Um, you actually have to uh, do something, uh, some actions to get the airdrop. It's actually not an airdrop. Well, or you can say it is pretty much like an airdrop uh, on the Web3 because you have to do some interactions with the contract, or smart contract and everything. So you can be eligible for the airdrop. Uh, same as this one. So you have to be there um, a certain time, which is the 30th of May, and uh, between 30th of May and the 9th of June. So between this time, you have to go out uh, in the restaurant, buy some takeaways, groceries, whatever, or just, uh, go, just go out, take a taxi or something like that to be eligible to get an airdrop somewhere around 80 Chinese yuan to 128 Chinese yuan, which is about 10 to $15. Um, a lot of people say, oh, that's not a lot of money, but I suppose any airdrop is very good, right? If you don't like the money, airdrop to me. And uh, about the Chinese digital yuan, a lot of people are still getting confused about it. I actually did a, a deep dive into this one as well. So, when researching these terms in the Chinese website, I actually realized that they are trying to avoid the word of the cryptocurrency, whereas they are using the blockchain and smart contracts. So these two words are being mentioned times and times. And when they are comparing with the um, the, the the different methods of payments, they're comparing with Bitcoin and Libra or DM, which is you know made by Facebook or Meta. Everything is changing name these days. Uh, so they're actually comparing with Bitcoin and uh, the normal uh, bank transfers. So it is a smart contract, it's going to be on blockchain, and uh, it is a CBDC. Coming up next is the Nike's uh, new Web3 firm, which is the RTFKT, which is pronounced as Artifact. They have bought a .shush Ethereum domain name, which is the uh, ENS, for $35,000. A lot of people say, wow, that's a lot of money. But for people who are deep in the space, uh, you know, we use ETH, right? A couple of days ago, I have um, I have talked to crypto viewers. I said, oh, look at this microphone. It's pretty good. And he's like, oh, talk to me about ETH. I don't deal with dollars anymore. So this one is actually for 19.72 ETH which is under 20 ETH. So if you think about the goblins, it's worth about um, two goblins. So you can argue with me <laughs> which one is more valuable. But uh, yeah, so it is uh, $35,000. It's uh, around 20 ETH. And uh, it is just a, a ETH domain. So for the people who don't know, it's a dot .sush dot .eth. This actually is the first... Um, Ethereum domain service they have purchased, even though they had a lot of um, service already. They, I think they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, they had nine already, and then now this is a ten. But this is the first time that they have purchased something. Other than that, they are all registered. So if you want to register one of these things, you can head off to the Ethereum domain services and you can actually register your name, let's say uh, abcd.eth, and then you can actually do it. Just make sure that you register it before anyone else does it. Moving on to the next, Solana again. Well, Solana had another attack. I think this is the seventh attack of the past year. Oh my God, this is the... This is this thing is going out of control. I mean, with personally, um, I would be still investing in Solana just because it makes money, right? I'm a speculator that does speculations, right? But other than that, I just think about with all the uh, NFTs, with all the things that are built being built on Solana, it just because it just becomes a little bit riskier than before now, because. Think about what happened to Luna, right? I mean, I had a lot of NFTs on the Luna service. I had the Luna, uh, Luna Ethereum, uh, Luna domain service as well, same as the Ethereum domain I just mentioned. I have a lot of things on it, but when a blockchain collapses, none of the things that built on the NFT, uh, none of the things that are built on to the blockchain worth anything anymore. 
So this is unfortunately what's happening with the Solana and uh, with the um, with the network. Even despite how fast they are, how good they are, uh, the transaction is the fastest, right? The the transaction of Solana is the fastest uh, on the earth, I believe. It is uh, faster than a Visa and a Mastercard. But if you can get attacks and then the entire network is shutting down, it just comes into serious concerns. But of course, I believe a lot of people who are listening to this podcast are going to have a huge uh, disagreement with me, which is fine. I mean, uh, we're in the uh, crypto space. A lot of people have a lot of views, uh, different opinions, So, which is fine. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about Solana and um, you know, we can have a conversation over there. Next up, well, I'm not too sure if it is news anymore because everybody has heard about it by now. Johnny Depp won the case with his ex-wife Amber. So everything, all the details are on the social internet, uh, social uh, networks, and you can literally search. You you know you, you don't even have to search right now at this point. You just everything just pops up, right? So the details I'll skip, but the uh, the summary is. The jury found Mr. Depp should receive around 10 million US dollars in the conversation, right? So he won the case, every, everything is good, congratulations. But what? guess what happened to the NFT space? Remember that he has his own NFT collection, which is called Never Fear Truth. Well, the, the collection, was, a lot of drama happened, was minted out in the late of January, uh, February. And uh, it, the, there was something wrong with the premint or something wrong with the contract. So instead of 14,000 collection, only 3,800 was being minted. Therefore, only 3,850 NFTs are ever going to exist in this collection. So uh, that happened. And then the price was, the mint price was pretty crazy as well, right? Back then. I think it was around 0.5 or 0.6 ethers to mint. Back then, people were blowing away. Wow, why would such an NFT collection be so expensive? So the price went up to about one ETH and at a point, but quickly came down to below the mint price. And after the review, which happened on the 3rd of March, a lot of the rare ones being sold over two ethers, but most of the uh, the floor price one, the basic ones, came down, came down, came down, and then it just uh, faded out. For the last few months, we can see the price was, uh, you know, hovering around 0.2 ethers, which was massively below the mint price. But you know, let's have a look at the last seven days chart. We can see this huge spike in trading volume and the trading uh, and the floor price as well. The floor price actually went above one ether at one point. But again, this is just such a degen play. I mean, a lot of people are speculating on the news release on the uh, things that's going to happen without comparing with the fundamentals with the things. I mean, the roadmap of the. Uh, NFT collection has not changed. NFT has not changed. It's just because people's mind have changed. So there are definitely money to be made. It just personally, I would not be participating into one of these things because for me, I think it just gamble. And that pretty much is the end of the show. And we have a lot of news that we got covered this week. Coming up next is reveal of the last week's winner which we only have one, which is Zondex. And she has on the, I assume it's a she, right? Uh, because of the uh, profile picture. So the question of the last week was, when did Jay, which was my co-host of the last week's show, started investing in Bitcoin? And the correct answer is 2016. So congratulations, Zondex. You have won an invitation to the DAX view. We will send you uh, DMs, we'll contact you to send you the invitation link. So thank you very much and congratulations. And the last thing is we have a secret password. The question is how much money was going to be airdropped to the Chinese city and which city is it? So if you think you know the answer, leave a comment below and smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification. And if you your answer, you got your answer right, we'll send you an invitation to the next view. 
be careful you have to be subscribed to the channel and liking the video as well we also are on apple podcast and spotify so make sure you can leave a five star review after you found us on the and also be sure to follow us on twitter at nuggets nifty now that is the end of the show thank you very much and you have a good week ahead of you thank you very much i'll see you again